Hello, everyone. This is Richard from Modern Healthspan. We recently had the pleasure of talking with Professor Lorna Harris from the University of Exeter. Professor Harris's group were the first to show the rescue of senescent cells with resveralox that we spoke with Professor Richard Farragher about recently. She has also proposed that changes that happen in RNA splicing be viewed as a new hallmark of aging. Understanding these changes and how they can be influenced is a key part of Professor Harris's work in developing therapies for age-related diseases. We will release the interview soon. As an introduction, we wanted to provide this video as a short overview of some of the concepts related to RNA and RNA splicing that we cover in the interview. So the first question is, what is RNA? RNA has many purposes, but in this case, we're talking about RNA as part of the machinery used to create proteins and so express a gene. DNA famously forms a double helix where the two strands are locked together by matching base pairs. There are four different types of bases, which are always paired in the same way. Sequences of base pairs in the DNA act as a blueprint for the amino acids, which will make up the protein. RNA is very similar to single-stranded DNA, although there is a change in one of the bases. Again, at a high level, here is the process known as transcription, by which the blueprint in the DNA is converted into a protein. DNA strands separate so that the base pairs can be accessed. RNA is assembled with the bases of the RNA matching their paired base on the DNA until a complete RNA is created. The RNA, called messenger RNA, detaches from the DNA, leaves the nucleus, and migrates to the ribosome. The ribosome is the machinery which assembles the protein by reading the sequence of bases in the RNA in a process known as translation. However, the DNA is not a continuous sequence of bases used to create the protein. There are regions called exons which carry the code for the protein and other non-coding regions called introns which are not used in the assembly process. The transcription process does not differentiate between the two regions and the initial messenger RNA contain both of them at this point, it is called pre-mRNA. So before the proteins can be assembled, the pre-mRNA needs to have the intron regions removed, a process known as splicing. This process is carried out by a set of proteins known as splicing factors. And finally, we have the spliced messenger RNA with only the components from the exons included, which can now be used to manufacture the protein. There is one more important complication. Not all of the exons are included in each protein. Through a process called alternative splicing, different proteins will be made based on the exons which are included or excluded and therefore alter the expression of the gene. What impacts the splicing factors in the alternative splicing and how it changes with age is our first topic in the interview.